Go to the layers panel in Affinity Photo and right click that layer. I said go there and duplicate. Again, duplicate. Now I want three of them. The reason for that is because I've got a channels panel and I want red, green and blue. I want to match them up. You can find the panels in the view menu, studio and layers and channels. So for this first one, I'm going to go for red and I'm going to click red there now. So you can see now in this composite red, all the others have been disabled. I'm only working in the red channel for this, for this layer. Then you can go to filters. Now you could use blurs, you could use all kinds of ones. I'm just going to go for my favorite one, which is filter, distort and deform. Of course, you could choose whichever one you want for your project you're working on. What you can then do is with this panel, you can just also add some handles around this image and you can place them anywhere. After a while, you get a fair feeling of what's going to happen when you distort the design. So you can just please check out my other videos on the deform filter. You can see you can create some really weird and wonderful distorts. I always wish there was a sort of feature to be able to pin around the edges. That would be one feature that I would love to see added to the deform. Because what unfortunately, what happens, it drags it out. You can, of course, go around that by just dragging them off in that direction. Now, once you've done that, you can click apply. Now, I can go to the next one. But however, obviously, that's on top. <laughs> Obviously, I won't be able to see anything. So what I need to do is I need to deselect that for now. And now for, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just reset it all back to that. Just reset there, it's just a little circle. It's not particularly obvious that it's the reset, but that's what you can do. Now, once you've done that, you can also now go to Composite Green. But this time, I want to go for this layer. Make certain you actually working on it. So select that layer. Composite Green is active. It's always worth checking because I know I quite often I do things I'm thinking, oh, that's strange, nothing's changing. And that's often the reason I'm working in the wrong one. And again, you could use another filter, maybe blur. You could, of course, combine it with various effects. So filters, blur, maybe Gaussian blur. Always puts it in the corner there, so I just drag that over and you've got that. I don't want it blurred so much that I can't see the lovely sort of spiral design. Now this was created in Illustrator if you're wondering where the uh, design was created. Now, once you've done that, there I can now go to Filters and Distort and Deform. And I'm again going to go with Rigid. Now you could go with Similarity, there's, there's two. I quite like Similarity, but I'm just going to go with Rigid for this case. And again, I'm going to add some handles or pins. I always call them pins, but I think they're handles. And then you can, again, distort the design. You can drag it out and you can do it differently. And to be honest, I suspect I would never be able to duplicate exactly how I did it in the red anyway, even if I tried. I can't particularly go every single angle that I drag there. And you can add, of course, multiple ones and you can really distort it in all kinds of ways, crunch it up, make like that, just create some very pinch points I always think of. Click apply. Now, what you can do, you can go back again. And I'm just going to go back here, click there, back to the thing. And you can see it now building up. Now I'm just going to remove that layer. Now, because what I want is the last one, which is going to be the blue layer. Now I could rename them. You can always rename these. So it makes sense. You select it. And this time go to composite blue. So click there. And you can do exactly the same as before. But you could go with filters, maybe use a different one. So maybe go for blur, but not that one. Maybe go for zoom blur. Maybe not so extreme. That's it sitting at a thousand. But just maybe just make it sort of like a shimmery effect as it sort of zooms out. And you can position it, you can move around, you can create some. I quite like the zoom blur, it's a really quite a nice effect. And that's at 34. But again, what you can do, filters, and you can go to distort and deform. And then you can, well, let's I'm this time I'm actually going to make the handles around this sort of the central part. So I'm just going to create that. You could Maybe that central part, the image, how it splits, so like a mirror effect. And then you can distort it again in that direction, drag it off in that way. Maybe drag it that way. And again, make certain you don't, and it's quite easy done. I mean, I quite often after I finish a picture, I look and think, oh, I've just made a mistake, so I could have to go back to it, where I've just dragged it in. So that you can see like over here, this is a sort of place that I might miss if I'm looking, I'm thinking, oh, I've done it. 
So it's always worth just checking, looking around the edge to make certain if you want to avoid that sort of drag in of the, the layer. Like I say, it would be lovely if there was a, a feature where you could actually stop it from doing that anyway. So now that's that done. That's for the blue, composite blue. And again, you can go always go and set it back. Now you can see obviously the blue there, you can see it going all the way through there because obviously the red and the green in this one, this layer, didn't change. Well, of course, I've, I've what's the name? I've gone, disabled all those. I've just turned around so I can now bring them back in again. And now you can see all three are active. Now, obviously what happens is with the red one, because of course the red one is on top and there's no blending modes at this point, you can't see anything, which is not much use. So what you need to do, just go here and you go for maybe say difference or overlay and you can run through them and maybe like say difference, which I don't think is so good actually. I think it makes it look very green, but overlay, just so you can see. And then go there, overlay and again, just make certain you go for, make, just go for a different one. Go for lighten, just, you know, run through them, just experiment, which ones work. You can see, oh, you know what, screen, let's just go back and let's see screen, colourment and so on. Sometimes that you think, oh, that really does work or exclusion. I think exclusion is always a good one. Actually, my favourite one is always divide sometimes. Divide sometimes can, then sometimes it can actually do the opposite. But you can run through it and just see, you think, oh, you know what, pin light. Pin light always seems to be one that comes out with some very interesting combinations. So you've got this design now, and that's using the color channels. Probably be very hard to do if you didn't use color channels to do this. And of course, once you've done that, you've got all these done, you can always then go to layer, and then you can merge them visible. So merge visible, so you can put them all into one single layer. And then you can, let's just get rid of those. And you've got that design there. And you, of course, obviously, you can go and manipulate that as well. So you can always go to filters and distort and deform. And now this time, instead of using rigid, which I quite often do, I'm going to use similarity. So similarity, and I, again, I can just go around central points or maybe the middle bar. Just add as many as you want. I don't know if there's a limit. There might be. There might be uh, 50 or 100. I've never hit a limit yet. I guess it might just get slower and slower when you add more and more resources. And you can see then you can distort it again. Just drag it, and again, just careful, you just don't get that edge here. Now I'm just gonna remove that, because they're in the way. And you can see you can create all kinds of different designs like that. And again, love this sort of pinch effect where you can sort of drag it up there. And of course you can apply it a couple of times. So you've got that design, click apply, and you can see the end result there. You can distort this image, which was, you know, a nice sort of, sort of round sort of design at the start. Now, not really very much like it at all. But of course, also another thing that's always great is you can always try and repeat. Go up to filters and repeat. And sometimes I always find applying it three or four times, especially if you avoided dragging it in. If you avoid getting it, otherwise it just drags even further in. But if you've got no sort of dragging in, it will end up sometimes creating quite a nice painted like effect. It's very unusual, like the paint all sort of swirling and moving in like that. However, I hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.